What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and once again, I am joined with Gersh One, or joined by, because we're not really joined with each other. Or maybe we are. Yeah, you you, you can't see our feet. You don't know what we're doing. We might be playing footsies. <laughs> and welcome back to another for the greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewers. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. Primero. And that is what good old Ty Shingleton did. Um, I don't even have to read his name anymore. I just see the thumbnail and I instantly know who it is. <laughs> if we ever meet, like you wear, you better wear that hat. Anyways, if the Big E saved Angron's gladiators, do you think Angron would have buffed them to Space Marine levels and fought with them in the Crusade? Um, yes. Because most other Primarchs did the same thing. Right. Yeah, Lorgar with... Corferon and what's it? Erebus. Name? Yeah. Um, you also had um, who was the other person? Oh, um, Vulcan. No, what's his name? Yeah, Vulcan with his Promethean cult dudes. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it, probably they would have been like super buffed up Space Marines. Half of them would, or most of them would have died, but like the few that would have remained probably would be like captains and stuff like that. Yeah. But that brings another interesting point of like the gladiators him the emperor choosing to just teleport uh angron away from a very pivotal moment in their like last stand thing yeah but i think that painted um angron's future betrayal so if that wouldn't have happened do you think angron would have been a loyalist yes because think about it this way they're already great fighters in their own renown Elevate Angron and his buddies to Space Marines, and you've got some really awesome badasses that are fighting for your cause. Yeah, and you get rid of that whole rage thing. Mm -hmm. because he won't be mad. He won't be killing generals and officers that try to calm him down. Yeah, um, it was just pure anger. Mm -hmm. And also you get to experiment on the butcher's nails a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, and how to remove them safely, because you have all these gladiators that also had them. Mm-hmm. And then the thing I never understood is why would the Emperor, like, save certain Primarchs or encounter certain Primarchs the way he did? Like, he went up to Lehman Russ and he's like, hey, I bet I can drink more than you. I bet I could, you know, fight you and win instead of just saying, hey, you're coming with me. Like, why couldn't he just teleport himself down to, to where Angron was and fought alongside him? Mm -hmm. No. It's, um, it's, it's, um, what is it called? A favoritism? Yeah. <laughs> and that, like, because, uh, Rurik says, the more I found I, for, blah, blah, the more I find out about this emperor dude, the more I think he's the biggest moron and asshole out there. I mean, you're kind of right. Because everything the emperor has done, it's either twisted in a way that makes it seem like it's the best thing for humanity um, but at the same time, it's like, no, like he could have done a lot to prevent the atrocities of chaos. And just overall, he could have done so much more to help humans and the galaxy as a whole in general. Like, why not tell the Primarchs about chaos? Um, why let humanity, quote unquote, lead itself when you know they're going to fall and whatnot? So, right. It is what it is. This next question comes from Drortun. Do you guys think it's possible to bring back the Eldar God since it's possible to create a new one? Inead? Yes. Inead is the God of Rebirth, so I think he would be the key to bring back the ones that have died. But you have to kill Slanesh first, because Slanesh has since devoured these gods and they're in her belly. Yeah, and it's very like... Um, it's like the Greek pantheon with like... Um, wasn't it one of the titans that consumed all of the Greek gods and then Zeus well, was the last one? Wasn't Kronos the one that actually had him oh, inside? Kronos, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Um, so, it's, so it is like, a, it alludes to that whole mythology. However, the one thing that I will say is that I think Games Workshop will not do this because Inead wasn't as popular. Yeah. So like, why focus an entire arc on returning or bringing back these gods when nobody's going to buy them. It sucks, because I would love to see that. To have, like, an avatar of Isha, an avatar of uh, Vol, like, that'd be pretty cool. Because mm -hmm. you do get a little bit of lore about 
like Asurian and all that during like their war in heaven. Right. And how they were fighting against like the void dragon and the old ones and whatnot. So it, it would be cool to see it, at least to get models or something. Yep. Um, but yeah, it sucks that uh, Space Marines get all the love. Yeah. But it's kind of our fault. <laughs> In a way, yeah, because we don't buy enough Xeno stuff. Mm-hmm. Next question. This one is by Gopheria Rebels. So my question is, since most Space Marine chapters specialize in different warfare or things, which chapters specialize against other entities in outer space or from the warp? Uh, Grey Knights and the Death Watch. Grey Knights are the Space Marines that are all about killing warp demons and whatnot, and the Death Watch are all about slaying Xenos. Yep. That's pretty easy. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, You got one? uh, I was going to say Dan, God of Wisdan. If you had to pick a being, or if you had to pick being a lord slash general of a faction, which faction would it would you choose? None of that rogue trader BS. They sound <laughs> nice, but sold separately in this question. Hmm. If I could be a general in an army, it wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want it to be Tau because I feel like the Tau have too many downsides. Like it's hard to lead an army that's mostly ranged. Because if you get caught in close combat, it's like, well, you're kind of done. Yeah. Hmm. I'd definitely choose orcs. I wouldn't be a warlord. Is that... I just want to make sure that I'm reading... Yeah, for a mini faction. Yeah. I'd want to be a war boss. I think it'd be interesting to be one in the Gene Stealer cults. Because you could be like, okay, sleeper agents that are fighting in the front lines, fall back, let the humans die. And then we like cause mayhem within the ranks. and It'd be interesting. Would you be... Which one would you want to be? Because I think there's like three, right? There's like the main gene stealer dude. Mm-hmm. And then there's like the psychic one. And then there's like the general type one. No, it would definitely be like the full gene stealer dude. Yeah. Like, I'm not any human or anything. I'm a straight up uh, xenomorph from Alien. <laughs> what are they called? Patriarchs? Yeah, the patriarchs. Yeah. And they're like fucking giant too. Yeah. Jake S., as an Iron Hand player, my Primarch is dead. Do you guys think there will be a new hero that is more infantry orientated? I hate the Iron Father Pharos. Probably not. No. Closest thing you'll get is probably the Iron Father. For now. For, mm-hmm. for ninth edition. But well, maybe next edition. Right. Or uh, jump on over to the Horus Heresy, the Forge Road, and play, uh, play your Primarch there. Yeah, that guy is pretty cool. He's um, doing his little thing. I had my head itches. <laughs> My head itches too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always like I, I love it when like major characters die because it adds to the story, and it's like how will the chapter like move on from here? But it sucks because it's like now you won't be able to use this guy or have any progression in his story. Mm-hmm. Like I really want to know like what would the Iron Hands be like if he was still alive? Even though I still have. A little bit of hope that they'll say that, oh, no, like they actually found the head of, of Ferris Menace and they put him in a uh, dreadnought. So you will have a dreadnought Primarch. Well, the head of Ferris Manus is a skull now that Horus, yeah, Horus used to talk to. But like if they somehow used it to like clone or, I mean, because I, I know there is a clone of Ferris Manus, but mm-hmm. like if there was like some type of like way to bring it back. Yeah. Because if you look at some of the uh, Dreadnought models where you take the sarcophagus part off, they're pretty bony. Mm hmm. They're very spoopy. Sp- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, same thing with uh, Sanguinius, too. The whole, he's dead, his sacrifice was amazing, to he's in a near death state in stasis. To, uh, it's like. Uh, I, I don't I don't want him to be alive, but I do because I want to see his uh, sculpt in 40k. I wouldn't be mad if they brought back a dreadnought style Sanguinius. Yeah, with like wings. Maybe that that would look really dumb. But <laughs> a dreadnought with wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next question. Pikachu nut. Do you think that at the last stand of Rylanor, the Thousand Sons of Stardis Vistario could have redeemed himself and tried to make amends for his chaotic acts? And also rejoin the brothers in the Army of the Light. Or was he always doomed to be in the throes of chaos in the warp for eternity? Who? Visterio. 
No, I don't know who that is. Uh, the Thousand Suns dude. Right, am I saying that right? Vis- Vistario? Vistario? Rey Mysterio? <laughs> um, I think like whenever Chaos claims you, you're pretty much done. Because look at uh, Magnus. Like once Chaos was like, you're mine, and they started putting all the things in motion, there's nothing he could have done to be redeemed. Right. Even if he was, quote unquote, redeemed, once K- once people believe you've been touched by Chaos, there's no coming back. Once you've been touched. Mm-hmm. This question comes from Isaac Langdon. What are your opinions of other 40K YouTubers? Uh, m- like, I watch Midwin- Midwinter, is that right? Yeah, Midwinter, Midwinter Minis. Minis. Really, really entertaining. Maniac mm-hmm. is really good. Uh, still watch uh, Mini Wargaming every, every now and then. Um, yeah, I don't really watch yeah. a lot of 40K YouTubers. Just because it's like, oh, I, got, I have my 40K dose, you know, here. Yeah. Um, but I do watch 40K in 40 minutes, uh, the play on tabletop, because their battle reports are literally entertaining. Mm-hmm. I'm never, like, on my phone or I'm never playing it in the background. If I'm watching it, I'm entertained, I'm focused. Their bat reps are really, like, above and beyond, like... Their terrain is awesome. Yep, the they, floating city. Yeah, that was freaking awesome. That, mm-hmm. that gave me a good um, idea. Right. So, I mean, every now and then it's cool to watch these, like, other people to see, like, oh, you know, look look at what they're doing. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, 40K every day all my life, that's a bit much. Yeah, the way that I do it, and, and I think this speaks to to kind of that concept that, like, we, we are trying to do, like, we make content. So when we look at other people, we try to, like, it, it's in the same field, but it's not really what we do. Because I don't feel like the people that I mentioned do what we do. Right, because they're like conversions and painting. Yeah, and those things, those aspects of the hobby are something that, to me, are still fun, and they don't feel like a chore or a work. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's really fun to watch them. Uh, Same with terrain building. Like even um, Black Magic Craft, I think it is. He's not Warhammer 40K related. He's D&D, but just watching his videos, it's it's a lot of fun. Right. D&D is something that you could easily switch over because there's this one guy who said, you know, make a table for your miniature games. That could be anything. D&D, 40K, Pathfinder, War Machine. Like, yep. Even if you're not into playing games, you could just have like an awesome like like table to like... Diorama. Diorama, yeah. Yeah. Good question. Dragon Punch 903. Who can survive the longest underwater? A space marine or a Tau? <laughs> That's interesting because... As, like, the Tau, for some reason, they name all their, like, units and vehicles based on, like... Water. Terran underwater creatures when they're not in Terra. Like, I never understood that. I wonder if that's just the Imperium cataloging Probably. Them that. Yeah. Yeah. And not in the actual Tau lexicon. Right. Because it's like, oh, these Tau are on a piranha. And the Tau are like, the fuck is that? <laughs> a piranha? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Because I know Space Marines, they don't necessarily need to breathe, right? Right, they they have some. There's some gene seed organ that lets them live underwater. They're not live underwater, but not dive underwater. Right, because mm-hmm. there have been battles that are fought underwater, where it's just like a regular space marine just like goes under there. Yeah, and a lot of it also has to do with its suit too. Right, um, but at the same time, there are Tau worlds that are entirely underwater. Yep. Now, I don't know if there's like bubbles under there where they could like live. But one of their major sept worlds is a freaking bubble. Bubble world. Like the Gungans? Mm Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I was thinking. This question comes from Kyle Elise. Favorite horror villain, humanoid, and creature, please. Mine are Jason Voorhees and Eight-Legged Freak Spider. Oh, Eight-Legged Freaks? I forgot all about that. Um, that's an interesting question. Favorite or most scary? He said favorite, right? Yeah, he said favorite. It's hard. It's hard for it's me fun. just because. Oh, go ahead. It's just hard for me because I I don't really watch horror movies. Mm-hmm. But like, what design do you think looks cool? I don't know. Is Godzilla considered a horror? <laughs> no, right? I mean, I, I, if you're, I kind of yes and no. I think humanoid would be the thing from um, what's Guillermo del Toro's um, underwater. What is it called? 
The one with the swamp monster. Oh, um, the shape of water? Yeah, so that guy, that humanoid looking like um, thing. <laughs> yeah. I think that one would be mine. I want to say uh, the, the xenomorph from Aliens. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I liked Freddy's design because it's simple yet scary with like the hand with the claws and just him being all burnt up. The creators from Prometheus. Mm. Or Pro- it was yeah, Prometheus. Prometheus right? yeah. Those are cool. All muscular and stuff. Yeah. They remind me of that one, like, was it Street Fighter character or King of Fighters? He looks just like him. He also reminds me of Putty. Putty. Next question. Hard base dodge. Space. Do space. No. Oh. Do Space Marines or any other Xenos soldiers know martial arts? Yeah. I mean, they drill every single day. Yeah. It may not be like the Kung Fu or Karate that, you know, you associate martial arts with. But yeah, they do have a certain... Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah. Certain teachings. I mean, look at... uh, I was thinking of An Shi. The dude's all about martial arts and stuff. Yeah. This question again comes from Isaac Langdon. What are your thoughts on the Netflix TV show? That's not even out, right? I don't think so. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's like, I want to have high hopes, but at the same time, it's like, I shouldn't. Because if I'm expecting a lot, and it's not up there, like, I'm going to be disappointed. What is it? Is it uh, Eisenhorn still? Yeah, yeah. As far as I know, it's still that. And that probably got pushed back because of the whole COVID stuff. Right. It's like I'm expecting a mix of like Witcher with more like sci-fi, but at the same time, like, uh, I shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think they're going to go that grim dark. Right. And like the Inquisition without it being grim dark is going to suck. It's just like the X-Files. Yeah, even though I really like the X-Files, but it's, it's a completely different vibe. That's like a sci-fi vibe. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking for that like sci-fi fantasy, like scariness. I wonder how quick they're going to get to the meat and potatoes of 40k. Who knows? Yeah. Or is it like the first three episodes is going to seem like, oh, this can actually happen in our world. And then you see like, I don't know, Xenos or something. Yeah. I know for a fact they got to have like a space marine show up at some point. Because, I mean, that's their poster boy. For sure, yeah. Is it going to be an ultramarine? (laughs) Chances are, yeah. Next question. (laughs) <laughs> Uncred head Do you guys leave the masks on When you're getting down to heretical business Um Yes because it restricts my breathing And I slow down Because if I go too fast I finish too fast You never want to You know Finish too fast Look at the uh Tortoise and the hare story Mm-hmm. Slow and steady wins the race Yeah uh, This question comes from Elliot Figu- Figueria Figueria what is the most LGBTQ friendly faction in 40k and why is it why is it the Rainbow Warriors? You know what this the Lord of the Rainbow Warriors is very conflicting. Like it it was one thing in early on and then it became something else now. Um cuz weren't they like one of the Lost Legions, right? Yeah. Cuz you had the Rainbow Warriors and then you had the uh what are the guys that are all like F you and they're yellow and red? Oh, the Angry Marines? Angry Marines. Yeah, but the Angry Marines was, like, created by 4chan and, like, the community Weren't the like Rainbow that. Warriors that, too? They were just created. No, they they, they were a legit um, faction in, like, early Rogue Trader. Mm. And I think they were part of the 20. Um, I, and, yeah, like, I think they were, like, rumored to be the Lost, I think. Oh, Maybe okay. something like that. Um, but, yeah, to answer your question, uh, probably Dark Eldar. No matter who you are, as long as you get... Pain. Mm-hmm. Um, Tao, they accept everybody as long as you uh, proclaim the greater good. And you fit in the right cast. So. And those are the questions for today. <laughs> if you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Thank you guys so much for sending these questions. Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. And we are out. <laughs>